So good morning, everybody. Thank you. I would like to thank the organizers for having invited me to give a talk here. Um, and would like to start with, um, if I, yes, with a very brief, well, everything has to be brief now, no? <laughs> with a very brief preamble, because we had the wonderful opportunity to uh, spend some time next door here at Birkbeck College, a full year in 1971-72, invited by David Bohm, and we had some very enlightening discussions with David, um, dialogues, very dialectic, by the way, uh, where we could discuss um, differences and similarities between our approaches. We were, in those times, Luis de la Peña and myself uh, working on um, uh, this, the distinction, to establish the distinction between quantum mechanics and Brownian motion as two different stochastic processes, and, uh, and the, especially the notion of interconnectedness always brought us back to uh, these interesting discussions with uh, David Bohm. So, um, and we did find some uh, connections, some parallelism between our approaches, and I will mention a few of those and then talk about uh, the, also the differences uh, between them. Um, so what was, uh, of course, very important is that we, have, we shared the motivations. And basically, the um, uh, uh, search for a causal, objective, and realistic approach to quantum mechanics and the recovery of particle trajectories. And I must say that David Bohm was very successful in uh, his search for um, this recovery of particle trajectories. If you look at the, at the Google, if you, if you Google particle, uh, quantum trajectories, you will find millions of references. Not hundreds, not thousands, but millions. And I think this is basically thanks to David Bohm. So that's one thing of many that we should thank David Bohm for. So in those times, we were uh, starting to um, look for the cause behind the stochasticity, not just establish the differences between classical Brownian motion and quantum stochastic, uh, stochasticity in quantum mechanics, but what is the source of stochasticity? And that's how we landed in uh, stochastic electrodynamics, with, uh, which exhibits, as I say, the quantum behavior of particles as a result of their interaction with the electromagnetic vacuum, the radiation field taken as a real field, uh, which is called the zero-point field. So um, we, um, I think there are some important parallelisms between uh, the Bohmian approach, whether you call it quantum theory of motion or Bohmian theory in 1952. There are, of course, differences, but I, th I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, we can say this is the Bohmian approach. Uh, there is a real field in the two cases. Uh, the, the, this field influences the particle motion. It's not just an, an, an abstract entity. It is, it is a physical field. Uh, it plays, therefore, a role, an active role in the dynamics. And uh, this is where the wave-particle duality comes from, from this field aspects. And, uh, and this is also where the non-locality in the description comes from, not in actual nature, but in the description. Uh, trajectories, of course, particle trajectories are well-defined and are continuous. There are no quantum jumps, uh, particles jumping from one, discontinuously from one place to another. And uh, the, those particles are uh, distinguishable. If particle one is here and particle two is there, this is particle one and this is particle two. And uh, entanglement, of course, plays an important role in, in, in all discussions. And in entangled states, uh, the particles are statistically correlated because they are physically connected through this field. 
Um, that's more or less where the parallelism ends. Uh, there are important points of divergence and uh, a synthesis of those is what is pr uh, here presented. Uh, whilst for David Bohm, quantum mechanics can be completed from within. Um, and you don't need a further, uh, an underbeat level of physical reality. This is not the case for stochastic electrodynamics. Therefore, stochastic electrodynamics is an emergent theory. Uh, you have to resort to a deeper level, and not to a deeper axiomatic level, as in other theories, but to a deeper physical level. Uh, about the nature of the field, you can see there are important differences. While for David Bohm, psi uh, itself is a physical field, and in psi equal r to the uh, times e to the i s, r and s are these two interrelated fields. In the case of stochastic electrodynamics, it's the zero point field itself what is the physical field, uh, and it's a real field. It's always there, and it has uh, a well known. Um, energy per normal mode equal to h omega uh, over 2, um, as established already by Max Planck in 1911. As to the random element, there are, of course, also differences, because for Bohm's, the statistics comes from the individual particle's initial conditions, for instance, the initial velocity. And the statistical meaning of psi is therefore uh, something, uh, is a secondary property. Uh, for us, the stochasticity is introduced by the individual realizations of the zero point field, by the components. Uh, one realization uh, is distinguished from another realization because of, of these uh, different um, uh, values of the random field amplitudes of the modes um, of the zero point field. There, and that is what makes uh, the description. Uh, necessarily be uh, statistically psi. The wave function has therefore a statistical meaning. Uh, other points of, of divergence, um, whilst in the case of the Bohmian approach, the particle does not influence the wave. The wave influences the particle, but the particle does not influence the wave. This is not the case in stochastic electrodynamics because there is a physical interaction between the zero point field and the, and the particle, and they influence each other. And the influence is indeed an essential element of the theory because that's what brings uh, the, the entire system of field plus particle together uh, jointly to uh, a, a situation of, um, uh, uh, of um, through this interaction of, for instance, the stationary quantum states. Uh, as, to the, as to the dynamics, we have in the case of Bohm's approach uh, a well-known um, formula for the local, local expectation values given by G equal to the real part of the, um, of the G operator G applied to Psi over... Uh, and uh, of course then this local expectation value in Bohm's theory depends on, on psi, on the wave function, which is a physical field. Uh, and the ensemble of trajectories is obtained only by averaging over the initial values. In stochastic electrodynamics, on the other hand, we have a, a quite different formula for the dynamical variables, uh, which uh, uh, is, as, as written there, it's a g as a function of of time, uh, depending on, uh, linearly depending on the mode amplitudes A, uh, with coefficients G uh, being the um, matrix elements, that's, that's what comes out of the theory, it's not, a, it's not a proposal, it is a result of the stochastic electrodynamics that these G, alpha, beta are the matrix elements in any stationary state alpha, and uh, 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 what, what this formula tells us is that the particle, once it is in a stationary state, uh, reacts, responds resonantly to certain field modes, uh, which are the modes denoted by the sub-indices sub alpha, beta, with um, frequency given by omega, alpha, beta. 
uh, expectation values are therefore obtained by taking the average, the ensemble averages over the different realizations of the uh, background field. So, uh, still a couple of points on the particle dynamics. Why, is for in, in Bohm's theory, the S states of bound state problems, the particle is completely at rest because V equals zero. This is never the case in stochastic electrodynamics. The particles are always in motion. Uh, they are never at rest. Even in the ground state, uh, the particle moves around its average position. And whereas for uh, Bohm, the, in, in Psi, bo uh, both R and S are fields, and the, and the gradient of S is a single valued function, and uh, therefore trajectories do not cross. In uh, stochastic electrodynamics, since the gradient of S being part of the function Psi has statistical meaning only, individual trajectories may cross, and normally they do cross. So, um, now I will say something about how uh, stochastic electrodynamics understands and explains interconnectedness, which is what brought us together with David Bohm in these interesting discussions. Um, so, we, uh, as I said, well, uh, stochastic electrodynamics describes the behavior of, of matter, of quantum matter, uh, when it has already achieved the quantum regime. Uh, and this is attained where, when a, a situation of detailed energy balance uh, between particle and field is, is, is reached by the system. The system is the particle plus its uh, surrounding field, uh, background field. And uh, what is very important to obtain the quantum description in this time as in topic limit is that uh, the system then has acquired ergodic properties. Uh, some, some results that you can see in the literature is, is mainly in, in, in two books that uh, uh, you can see up as, uh, look up as references. Uh, I will put them at, at show them at the end. Uh, some main results are, well, we obtain the, disc the quantum description for the stage, quantum stationary states. Uh, we have both the Schrodinger description and the Heisenberg descriptions. Uh, we obtain quite easily the formulas for the radiative corrections, lifetimes, lamp shift, etc. We obtain also, and that is very interesting, uh, the electron spin as part of the emerging uh, features uh, um, uh, where the zero point field plays an essential role and uh, the gyromagnetic, the correct gyromagnetic factor for the electron spin. Um, we also obtain entanglement, and that's what I'm going to refer to in, in the next couple of slides. And also, more recently, the reason for the anti-symmetry of the um, electron wave functions and uh, connection with the Pauli exclusion principle. Um, I will use uh, some basic notions of what we call linear stochastic electrodynamics, which is not the linearized version of, of stochastic electrodynamics, but is the equivalent of the Heisenberg description, but with a, a very different physical, uh, uh, let's say, um, conception uh, from what is normally uh, um, presented as the, as the in, in, in usual quantum mechanics as the Heisenberg description. Uh, and what is, makes it conceptually completely different is that it still contains information about the field modes. How many minutes? Uh, two. Two? Oh. About the field, uh, it still contains information about the zero point field modes that are, uh, that lead the, the system to the to these quantum uh, stationary states. And uh, 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 one, one very clear example of that is how entanglement is produced. Uh, the first equation refers to one particle, as I already mentioned before. This is the way that the, the, um, any dynamic, relevant dynamical variable is expressed. In, uh, in linear stochastic electrodynamics. There you have the, the linear response of the system to the uh, modes uh, uh, denoted by alpha, beta. Now, if you have 
a bipartite system, you have two electrons, for instance, then you can calculate correlations. You have two dynamic variables, f and g, pertaining to particles one and two, and that is uh, the expression for um, the product of f and g when they are form part of the same uh, system, which uh, the state is, um, the uh, state of the bipartite system is denoted by capital A. And uh, the other states, uh, B, are the, those that can be attained from A uh, by uh, transitions. So B refers to any other accessible state uh, with, an, with a different energy. But when you have two identical particles, you have two possibilities uh, for omega a b equals zero, either because the two have the same, uh, are in the same state, a and b are the same state, or when the energies are the same, but the, the, the states are not the same. So you always have a degener degeneracy when you have a two identical uh, particles. And that means that the, there are two contributions to the product Fg. There are always two terms. This is unavoidable. And when the, uh, you can say the same about the product of Fg in state B. Now, when A and B, capital A and capital B, uh, are different states but have the same energy, that is, there is a degeneracy, then uh, with, uh, after some algebra and using matrix notation, you have that necessarily the state function is, uh, um, uh, is an expression involving two, uh, separate, two separate states which have the same energy, state capital A and state capital B. And lambda is the product of the two mode amplitudes um, that connect the states. So that means that if two identical particles constitute a single system, which is in a stationary state, entanglement is unavoidable and the entanglement is produced because the two particles are connected to each other through the common um, uh, field mode uh, denoted by alpha, alpha prime. So I'm, I'm s sorry that the, I have to say that in, in very, uh, in, in a very short time, but uh, I thought it is important to give a physical picture of what entanglement is and what it can, what, how it can be produced by uh, using um, this basic hypothesis about the uh, action on the particle, the permanent action on the particle of the zero point field which acts indeed as a mediator between the, the two particles. And this is what opens the door also to physical explanations, for instance, on the spin statistics connection, and more recently on the Pauli principle. Um, an, uh, a paper is actually about to appear in quantum studies, mathematics, and foundations on, on the Pauli principle. Uh, these are the two basic references, which I mentioned at the beginning. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much.